So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Elena Chernaeva, and I'm the Networking Program Director with ERIC, Edmonton Region Immigrant Employment Council. And I am Komaljeet from ENCN. I work as an employer liaison, and we are your hosts for today's event. As you may already know, our goal at EMCN is to provide employment services and at ERIC, mentorship and networking programs so that our clients participate in the workforce at their full potential. We achieve our goals also by providing learning opportunities like this webinar. And today we are excited to learn about the opportunities with the engineering field. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping things with you guys. So you will be muted during the presentation. And, uh, this, and that's the reason, the reason for that is that we don't want to have any background noise. Under on the uh, chat box, you're gonna see chat box and Q&A, question and answer box. So the chat box is for technical questions and the Q&A is for questions you have to the presenters. So you can write your questions during the presentation or after whatever works for you. And we will be recording this uh, webinar so you can check it out later on on our YouTube channel. Right after this uh, webinar, I'm going to send you the information uh, how to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can also watch previous recordings. Here is our agenda of one hour webinar today. Uh, in the first 20 minutes, we will hear from Inayat Aminzala, uh, International Qualifications Officer with APEGA about the various levels of membership with APEGA and their requirements for p and accreditation. The following 20 minutes, Wahid Ayan from City of Edmonton will share his story as an immigrant, the importance of Pepega volunteering, and Eric mentoring in his growth as an engineer in Canada. And the last 20 minutes are dedicated to questions. Feel free to ask your questions only in the Q&A box during the presentations and after. And now I'm very pleased and honored to invite our guest today, Enayat from APEGA. He is your guy, the guy who gonna answer any question you may have regarding your accreditation. Hello, Enayat. Hello, Elena. And Vahit is our hero because he was a mentee and now he's a mentor. So that's why he's so important to us and once you become successful, you want to be like Vahid. He's your role model. Hello, Vahid. Hello. Thank you very much for the nice word, Elena. Thank you guys for coming today. And now we go ahead with uh, Enayat's presentation. So Enayat, you may want to share your screen. Okay, uh, Elena, are you able to see my screen? Yes, perfect, and we can hear you very well. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, uh, thank you, Elena um, and Komaljit for the invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I know that Vahid has an incredible story to, to tell you, uh, which is not fictional. It, it actually happened to him, and, and he's here to, to tell it. Uh, so I'm not going to be um, taking too much time because his story is, is really the, the inspiration um, uh, that will be for, for many of you. Uh, but of course, I'm going to talk about uh, what is the registration process with APEGA uh, and the various licenses in, in registration types that uh, you can be eligible for. Uh, because we have such limited time here on this, on this webinar, uh, feel free to contact me for uh, further questions. Um, I, I normally find that there are very specific questions after the fact and not so much during the, the webinar, but I know that uh, the organizers have allocated some time. 
uh, during the webinar to go over the questions that you may have. So as you think of questions during uh, my presentation, uh, I ask that you hold them until the, the end, but maybe write them down uh, so that uh, you don't forget those questions and I'll be happy to answer them all. I hope everyone's keeping safe. Uh, these are very um, interesting times. Uh, I would have done this type of a presentation normally in person, which is my favorite. Uh, I, I love uh, doing these kind of uh, presentations uh, where the audience is, is there and I can see faces and I can, I can, I can respond to reactions. Um, unfortunately, uh, times are such that we must stay apart and that is for the um, betterment for everyone uh, and for everyone's safety. Uh, because this uh, webinar is being recorded, I'm just going to mention for the record that today is October 22nd, um, uh, 2020. And the registration process that I'm going to be talking about is, is the most current information as of the, this date. I suggest that when you are ready to apply to APEGA, you refer to the uh, a PEGA website so that you can get more updated information just because the registration process uh, has become such a dynamic um, uh, a, a process over, over the last few years and there's always some kind of, uh, of an update or, or, or a change. I also wanted to see if we have any geoscientists in the audience, because as you may or may not know, APEGA regulates two, two professions, engineering and geoscience. And I know this event was primarily um, promoted as a en engineering um, event. Are there any geoscientists? Uh, if there aren't any geoscientists in the audience, then uh, I am going to skip all those slides. Maybe I'll give you a minute. So if there are any geo people, just write it in the chat box and say yes. Otherwise, and I am gonna continue just for engineering professionals. We rarely have uh, geoscientists and I am, so nobody says there are one, so you may skip that part. Okay. Um, there is one. Oh, there's one. Okay. <laughs> so that, awesome. Okay. Um, just in time. So I'll, I'll make sure that I mention uh, the requirements for the geoscientists as well. Alberta needs geoscientists, I think. We need more <laughs> geoscientists. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Sorry for interrupting you again. So this Ozarume says he's a geoscientist, but he works as a field engineer. Okay. Okay, well, regardless, I'll, I'll, I'll mention oh, the, yeah, the, the information. Um, I, and one interesting fact about uh, APEGA in geosciences is that APEGA uh, probably has the most uh, geoscientists as part of its membership uh, uh, in all over Canada. Uh, so even, even though we don't see as many ge geoscientists around the um, uh around these, uh, th these, these presentations, but they, they do exist and the majority of the membership is, is with, uh, with APEGA. Uh, and we're very happy about that. Uh, APEGA regulates the uh, profession of engineering and geoscientists uh, on behalf of uh, government of, of Alberta. Uh, and the way the, the profession is regulated uh, or the professions are regulated in, in, in Alberta and in Canada, uh, might be very much different from a lot of the countries that uh, some of the audiences would have come from. Uh, in other countries, you may be a part of um, uh, a technical society or a, go a government office, uh, but for you to go through a rigorous registration process uh, in order to become licensed uh, uh, as an engineer or geoscientist in, 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 in Alberta may be very much different than what you are used to which is why I'm, I'll be spending some, some time to talk about the very specific steps. The mandate for APEGA to regulate the professions of engineering and geoscientists comes from the Engineering and Geoscience Professions Act, which is a legislation. Uh, it is a local legislation. Um, other provinces and territories also have um, uh, a, a similar type of a registration uh, process that comes uh, directly from 
the licensure requirements as per the legislation in their local uh, from their local government. And since 1920, APEGA has been promoting um, uh, public safety through uh, its registration process uh, and uh, 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 professional conduct supports to its, its members. Now, uh, the legislation gives APEGA uh, two functions to undertake. Uh, uh, the, the first function is a, as a regulator or a statutory function. And as, as part of the statutory function, APEGA offers registration services to not only individuals, but also uh, uh, corporations that are offering or would like to offer engineering and geoscience services to the Alberta public. And as part of its statutory responsibilities, APEGA also has the authority to investigate complaints its uh, its its members um, uh, against the um, complaints that would have been received uh, from the public. APEG also has the authority to di discipline uh, the individual or the corporation if the investigation yields positive. Um, and of course, APEGA um, does make sure that those who are promoting themselves as engineers and geoscientists in Alberta are, are properly registered and are competent and qualified to do so. If, if they're not, APEGA will ask them to cease what they're doing and seek registration with APEGA. We do have a team within uh, APEGA that, that mainly focuses on enforcement of the legislation. The non-statutory obligation uh, or responsibility of APEGA rests with the supporting and sustaining members uh, that, um, that have seeked registration with APEGA al al already and are, go uh, are going to be supported um, uh, on the standards uh, that they are expected to practice um, at. Therefore, APEGA has again two functions, one as a regulator uh, which registration is a part of that, and as a um, uh, a supportive service to its its members uh, by 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 providing sustainable and 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 supportive supportive programs and services to make sure that they're able to uh, comply with all the requirements. Now uh, there are uh, very specific requirements uh, for registration. Uh, as an engineer and geoscientist, and, and those requirements come directly from the legislation, which is why they are so rigid or so fixed. Uh, the definition, there is a definition of engineering and geoscience. I'm not going to read this, but this is something that you can um, uh, Google and, and look at the detailed definition of a, uh, what the practice of geoscience is and what the practice of engineering is. But I just wanted to highlight, highlight um, just uh, one, one sentence from the uh, definition for geoscience, and I'll do the, the same for engineering as well, that the practice of, ge of, of geoscience is the professional application of the principles of mathematics, chemistry, physics, or biology through the application of the principles of geoscience. So the application of theory of geoscience must be at the professional level. Uh, and I've got a similar example, um, uh, example of a um, definition that, I, that I've highlighted for, for engineering as, as well. So what is the practice of engineering according to the legislation? Uh, it is the professional application of the principles of mathematics, chemistry, physics, or any related applied subjects. Um, again, uh, the application of engineering theory has to be at the professional level. Uh, the application process is such that all the applications are online for internationally trained applicants, which most of you are, uh, uh, you will need to arrange for your credential evaluation to come directly from World Education Services. Uh, uh, there are multiple uh, credential evaluation services uh, in, in Canada. Uh, APEGA only accepts uh, the reports to come directly from uh, World Education Services. If you already have one report as part of your immigration process, you can simply upgrade that uh, by contacting uh, World Education Services and they will provide the report uh, to, to APEGA directly. Uh, once the application is, is submitted, the application will go through an internal review to make sure that all the application um, information that is required for a full review is there. If there's anything missing, the application will be put on hold and your application will not move forward. 
for professional membership application, there are two requirements. One is the academic requirement, which means that the education must meet uh, the, the education standards that are expected of a Canadian graduate, as well as experience review where the, the competencies and abilities of, a, of an engineer, engineer scientist must uh, be acceptable to the board of examiners, again, uh, as they are um, expected of a Canadian graduate. Uh, the Registration Executive Committee makes uh, a decision based on the uh, recommendations received from ac the academic review and the um, experience re review. Actually, I just see that there's a typo for experience review uh, in the bracket. It should say experience review. It, it again says academic review. Uh, the um, the APEGA staff will communicate that decision uh, to uh, the applicant uh, and the decision from the, exe the, the executive, executive committee of the Board of Examiners could be one of three. One is to approve the application because the applicant has met all the requirements of registration or defer the application, which is different than, than refuse the application. Defer meaning that the, that, uh, uh, the Board of Examiners have imposed one or more conditions before you could be licensed. Uh, but the application is not refused. But if the application is refused, that means your, your application is no longer in process. Uh, there are various types of memberships um, uh, or various types of, of, uh, of, of applications. Uh, and, and the first one that I'm gonna briefly mention is the member in training. Member in training is, uh, is, is an, an application type that only requires an individual to have a uh, good character and reputation uh, and, and of course a bachelor's degree in engineering or geoscience. Uh, the bachelor's degree content must be uh, uh, similar to that of a Canadian accredited program. Uh, as a professional member, so professional engineer or, or uh, professional geoscientist, there are six requirements that must be met. One, uh, you must be a Canadian permanent resident or, or, or citizen. Uh, you, you must have completed a, an acceptable bachelor's degree in engineering or geoscience. Even if you have a postgraduate degree, the starting point is always your engineering degree. So some of you may have completed a master's uh, or any other type of postgraduate degree in Canada. Uh, know that the starting point is your bachelor's deg degree. So if you have a foreign degree, you need to make sure to submit your West report. Uh, a minimum experience requirement that is, uh, 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 that is needed for you to be eligible to apply is 48 months. So uh, it's not 47 months uh, or 46 months, it's, it's, it's 48 months. English language competency must be met. Uh, you must have uh, uh, knowledge of law, ethics and professionalism, uh, which, is, uh, which is demonstrated by writing in passing the national professional practice exam. This is one exam that cannot be waived uh, based on experience or, or, or academic achievement. Um, every applicant must write this exam, no matter if you're a Canadian graduate or, or outside of Canada. Uh, and you must be of good character. Uh, as a, a professional licensee, now this is a different um, uh, license than a professional member because this th this is a limited license. As a professional uh, uh, engineer or geoscientist, there are no limitation on the scope of your practice. Uh, however, you are expected as a professional engineer in geoscientist to only practice in an area that you are competent in, but most importantly in an area that you can take technical responsibility for. But as a professional licensee, which has different requirements, as you can see on the, on the screen, the, um, the scope of practice is, is very much defined as part of your registration. So you can only practice in, an, in the area where you have the uh, uh, required uh, uh, knowledge and experience. So to give you an idea about the various designations, uh, as a member in training, your, your, your designation will be uh, engineer in, in training or geoscientist in training. So you, you need to clarify that. As a professional licensee, as I mentioned, it is a limited license and the designation is PLNG for engineers and PLGO for, um, uh, for geoscientists. For licensee, 
Uh, now, licensee and professional membership is pretty much the same. The only difference between licensee and professional member is that as a licensee, you do not have to have Canadian permanent residency. In, in other words, if you meet all the other requirements of a professional membership obligation, but you don't have Canadian permanent residency, uh, therefore, uh, you are eligible to apply as a licensee, which will give you pretty much the, the exact same designation. Now, in terms of um, assessment of experience, this is one thing that um, uh, I spend quite a bit of time on, on, and I'll be happy to answer more questions about this. Uh, the, the assessment of, of experience for ge geoscientists entails that uh, the ge geoscience applications um, uh, include a work record uh, like you have on the screen. And on this work record, you will provide information about your employer, your position, how long you, you, you have been there, who your, your references are, and who your um, uh, supervisor are for all of the positions that you have held. So you will complete one of this uh, record for each of your employment um, uh, or, or job titles. And as, as part of the, the employment record, you will be asked to pro provide a brief overview of what your responsibilities were um, in, in that title uh, and also provide uh, a very detailed uh, uh, description of, of, of your contributions to geoscience related activities as part of your, your job. And then of course you need to distinguish between what what were some of the activities that were, that you identify as a professional application of, uh, of of theory, or or what were some of the activities that were defined as uh, as a technologist level uh, application of of, of 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 geoscience theory? And if you say if you had um, uh, only one job in the last four years, uh, you would need to provide th uh, at minimum three references. Uh, which means that you will have to submit three of these uh, work records. If you have had more than uh, three jobs, you would provide one record for each of, of your jobs in a reference. Now, articulating work experience, the way you would articulate or describe your work experience is by answering these three questions. Uh, what did you do? How did you do it? And why did you do it? Uh, there are some so, some examples how you may go about uh, answering the uh, these questions on the screen. Now, the, the, these are very simple responses to the questions, uh, but when you write the work record uh, for e each of the job title, you need to be much more um, detailed, and, and, and you want to be as detailed as possible so that the board can have an idea uh, about uh, or, or, or clarity about your, your abilities as a professional geoscientist. But to give you an example of, of how these questions may be answered, um, this is a very simplified answer. Now, in terms of the references, as, as I mentioned, you need a minimum of three re references, uh, one for each of your job titles. And you need to, to understand that um, in order for you to have a strong reference, you need to make sure that the reference is, is somebody uh, who is a geoscientist because only a geoscientist can, uh, uh, in most cases, can uh, ev uh, validate or, or, or verify your geoscience re related activities. Uh, so therefore, you, you need to make sure that you've got a technical person uh, validating your geoscience activities. And in terms of the work experience assessment for uh, engineers, uh, the, the, the engineering work uh, experience assessment is a bit different than geoscientists because um, APEGA has adopted a new model of assessment of experience, which is called uh, the uh, uh, competency-based assessment. And the three pillars of a competency-based assessment are are the uh, knowledge of, of, of theory, um, applicants' ability to apply that, that knowledge, and having the, uh, the uh, professional attitudes and values of a professional engineer, which entails that um, every professional must uh, keep the public safe uh, by, by, by only practicing uh, uh, engineering and geoscience act activities that are 
um, that are that are competent and, and that are ethical. Now, in terms of uh, the definition for CBA, a competency-based assessment, again, CBA only applies for engineering applicants, not for geoscience. Uh, the Board of Examiner has, uh, Adapega has adopted a definition for CBA, which is a process uh, that determines an applicant's suitability for licensure by verifying and reviewing their ability to perform engineering tasks through competencies. And what the Board of Examiners are looking for is applicant suitability to become a, a, a professional engineer. Uh, and as, as part of that, that, that suitability um, assessment, uh, the uh, CBA system is comprised of these seven, sorry, these six uh, categories of, uh, 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 of, of, of competencies. And within each of these categories, there are subcategories that each applicant must meet. So in, in total, there are 22 subcategories or key competencies that every engineering applicant must meet before they uh, are able to meet um, uh, uh, some of the requirements of experience. And, and the process for CBA system is such that it, it's a, it's a form-based system. Uh, the applicants will, will need to verify the examples that they, they provide for meeting each of the key competencies uh, by providing references to make sure that the, the, the employment period is confirmed. And validators who are engineers, technical people who will validate the engineering activities uh, that have been mentioned in, in the application. Uh, and as, as part of the, the application process for, for, uh, for engineering uh, in the CBA system, uh, every um, applicant must self-score uh, their ability uh, in each of the 22 key competencies. Uh, and, and, and again, the, the same scoring will be done by the validators as, as well. Uh, and uh, the third time the, the uh, key competencies are scored are by the uh, APEGA examiners. So uh, as an applicant, you will, you will do self-scoring. So when you, pro when you provide an example for, for each of the key competencies, uh, you need to make sure um, that again, you provide a, a reference who will validate the employment per period where that example is coming from, a validator who will, who will validate or confirm your, your, the, the example that you, you have provided. Um, and, uh, and, and the scoring. So you will self-score, uh, the validator will, will score, and then the, the APEC examiner will also uh, assess the example that you, you have provided, uh, and the APEC examiner will also score, score the, the example that you have provided uh, 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 on, on the same scoring scale. And then the executive committee of the board of examiners will make a decision based on the recommendation from, from the, the, the examiner uh, that worked on your file. So uh, what matters um, uh, in your application is of course, uh, the quality of, of the example that you provide to demonstrate your, your, uh, your, your, uh, your ability in, in meeting the, the key competencies. Uh, your your valid, validator who will validate that example and provide uh, also comments. And uh, a PECA board of examiners will review not only your, your example, but also the, 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 the assessment from the validator that we will get. And also from the comments that the validators and references will provide. Um, as, as part of the CBA, um, uh, system, the competency-based assessment. Uh, uh, I know this is a, a very complicated um, uh, process and there's a lot of information on the APEGA website and I, I'm also very happy to answer any question that you may have. But now, uh, now that we, we have talked about uh, the specific requirements for each engineering and geoscience applications, now what happens after you have gone through all the re registration process and you are successful uh, and you are now a... Um, uh, a member of, of APEGA. Once you become a, mem a member of APEGA, you must maintain your membership in good standing. And, and in order for you to maintain your membership in, in good standing, of course, you have to pay the annual fees, but also you need to make sure that you have a continued professional development. Uh, and APEGA requires that you provide uh, or accumulate at least 240 hours of professional development um, uh, as, as it is stated uh, in the uh, uh, in the 
on the on the APEGA website, and, and you, you you can gain these hours of professional development, in in one of these six categories. That again, you can find more information uh, on the website. Uh, uh, once you become a member of APEGA, in, in fact, as soon as submit your, your application, you will have access to the online portal, which uh, you can sign in and uh, uh, and 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 uh, not only continue your, your application, but also once you become a member, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you can pay your, your your fees online, and you can also record all all the CPD hours or the continuing professional development hours. At this point, um, uh, I'll, I'll stop here. And I know I've gone over time a little bit. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your your questions uh, after Bahid speaks, uh, or I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to the or organizers to decide. Uh, but I'm I'm very excited to hear uh, Bahid's story because it is it is an an, an incredible story. Thanks very much, and uh, uh, yeah, look forward to your questions. Thank you, Inayat, for the valuable information. And uh, now I would like to invite Wahid uh, to present his Bright Spot story. Over to you, Wahid. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Inayat like, told a lot of things about me, and I really appreciate for your nice work in meeting with Apega. How can I start my process? Yeah, at, at the beginning when I started my like registration, registration process, I registered as a kind of like foreign licensee or something like that. But when I moved here, I turned everything to the like professional engineering designation. So yeah, when when I moved here in 2015, like I'll tell you um I wanted to know how the market, how the industry works here. The good thing about the, about the Edmonton is that like you can find a lot of volunteering opportunity. You know, like all the organizations are open to give you, to provide you this opportunity. So it is very good chance because when you volunteer to somewhere you dedicate your time even in more cases your money like maybe it's very minimum but yeah you put your time and you sacrifice your time to to that organization but like in return you get a lot of things you learn uh, how the system works and also you build a kind of very mutual trust between the organization and yourself. So from there, you you find some friends, some like some people who can trust you, and you can trust. Them. Yeah, it it happened to me always, but I wanted to find somewhere that I I I, I volunteer with a lot of places, but I wanted to find somewhere that fits to my field you know fit to my engineering field i wanted to see more engineers like more i don't know like company ceos more people who work in the field or in in, in my field and i did to know the, like the people like i wanted to become familiar with the industry become familiar with the local engineer uh, or local geoscience Geo um, yeah, I for that, like I went to the Africa website to find out what, like, how what is the opportunity. But before finding the opportunity, I found a lot of presentation, a lot of like events that I can go and participate on in that event, in those events. Some of them. I had to like pay, I don't know, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks or something like that, some of the event. Also, uh, but most of them also were, were free. One of the events that I just like got to know in Ayat was one of those events. Like I participate in, in the event like this, like but in person. 
and there was a lot of like immigrants, a lot of people like even the engineers when they 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 they, they participate in that event. And yeah, I that was a kind of a starting point. But at the same time, from there, from participating in different events, I find out that okay, I can go and volunteer with different subcommittees within the APEGA. One of the like the big events that I can go, I, I, I went and participated. Mm, could you go back to the first slide? Yeah, thank you. And was the Science Olympic? You know, like the uh, APEGA has a, a kind of big event. They call it like that annual event. I think it there was not happen this year, but that annual event that Science Olympic. And you work with the high school with the schools and they build uh, some engineering craft and they part they they bring and present like those kids they bring their like work hand work and they present there and like that that's a kind of one day event yeah that science olympic was one of the events that i participated and i found a lot of friends there so after that i participated in the science night and also, it was the a kind of monthly event that we used to go to the school to like to present the APEGA to the kids and teach them some engineering scopes. And in parallel, I was studying for my MPP exam. And I think some of you knows that like maybe that the MPP was what is the MPP exam? That's the kind of ethic exam for the engineers. And yeah, it was a kind of like maybe difficult, hard, and but it it's worth it because I wanted to take the step toward the being licensed here. Yeah, I I did the MPP exam and after that I I found out that okay, I can be part of the like question providers for this MPP team. I registered for that team and there it went to a lot of checkpoints and but like after a lot of like confidentiality review or this type of thing, they approved me as a part of team and I become I became and now I am also a part of the question provider for this MPP exam. The exam that I I put like a few months time energy and now but like when I joined the team I was really excited because the, the I was the question provider for that exam and it was really interesting so in parallel also I was a, a part of the sponsorship subcommittee of the Edmonton branch it was a kind of great opportunity to me to get to know some of the people who are still work with them now because I we started some friendship now we are colleagues I'm client but they are my contractor and yeah it was they, they, they were before like joining the board in one of the AGM I participated I think it was 2015 AGM or 2016 I don't remember exactly yeah I participated there and I after talking with the with some of the engineer some of the people there and I realized that yeah I'm I'm not still I'm not the PN but I can become the part of the board I can become the part of the decision makers team so I started to build more relationship for the next AGM it took me a while and I in the next AGM I, I stepped in and I put my name as a kind of candidate for the Edmonton branch board and yeah, in that AGM, I got enough vote to become the board member. It was a, another step forward to take the leadership position, to become a part of the decision maker team. When I become the, the board member, and I started chairing the, some of the subcommittees, like outreach subcommittee. Last year, I was the, again, I I got candidate and I I got elected like in the last two years, three years. Again, I was treasurer of the 
Edmonton Branch Board, and currently I'm the vice chair of the Edmonton Branch Board. So I'm telling you all of these stories because when you become the, when you start volunteering with the APEGA, it's not on, only like some about volunteering because you starting building, expanding your networks within the engineer, within your future colleagues. When you expand the, your network, it helps you to learn more about the leadership, more about, you, it, it helps you to learn more about your like leadership skill or engineering skill, technical skill, how the system works, like where the, the, the these people, the, you, the, the, the people are, you working with them, the, where they are working. You know, like in some cases, when I was volunteering, I, I, I used to invite those people to the coffee, like during the lunch time, they were busy, but after building some trust, they, they were accepting my invite for maybe half an hour coffee, like after work hours, after five, 6 p.m. or like during the lunch time. And I was asking them about their work environment, how the system works. Even when I was applying for the job, I was asking them for the help to reviewing my application process or like my resume or cover letter, because they are, each city, each, each, each like organization has got its own system. But I, when I was become of the APEGA team, I had access to a lot of people to just like collecting a lot of information. I mean, it was somehow like long process, but it was a kind of very enjoyable process, which I still deal with that and I really enjoy. Can, can we go to the second page? And then I could, oh, okay, good, thanks. And you know that the story that I told you, a lot of you can exactly follow that process. It's built for everyone. It's not only for me or like for other people. It's built for everyone. You guys can take those steps exactly. And you can, even you can do the shortcut because I, it took me a lot of time to like to recognize that, okay, there is some opportunity within the output like Apega because I want, I, I didn't, no, no, nobody told me those stories, but I want to, like, I, I just explored them by myself. Now I'm telling you and you guys can take the shortcut. So, within the Apega Edmonton branch, I'm telling you about the Apega Edmonton branch, but in parallel, whole Apega has got its own opportunity as well. The, the details that now I'm giving you here is mostly about the Edmonton branch. We have different subcommittees and we are always open to use your services, your help, your support. One of these are like subcommittees are the launcher. And you guys can volunteer and you, you can become a a part of the subcommittee, and at the same time, you ha can ha participate in this luncheon. Technically, in the normal situation, like before COVID, we had the kind of in-person luncheon, and we used to invite some, like mm, someone from the industry, and use that and have their presentation. And also at the same time, we had we ha we, we could like take the lunch. And but now we don't have those in person, but the good side, the positive side is most of this presentation now are free. Before that, we there the, 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 the was some cost associated with that, like small cost, but now most of them are free. Even you can participate in the Edmonton brand presentation and you can participate also in the like Calgary luncheon event. And at the same time, you guys can like, let me know. And if you want, I, I can help you to become, to volunteer with any sub, any of this subcommittee that you want and you are interested. The social subcommittee was also very helpful to me at the, at the beginning. The social subcommittee usually has some like 
one or two, maybe three events like during the year. They organize like like visiting some infrastructure projects, some like some projects, some different projects which are under construction or completed. One of the projects that I visited in 2016, I think was the Antoine Hinde project and I visited there and I become, I, I, I know, I, I started to get to know some people that they were like, I, I find one of my, my, my first mentor when I joined that event, when I visited there and I found some guys that can mentor me. And I, in, that, in that event, I asked his mentor, ship support uh, he accepted so i came back after that event and i started asking atega to build this mentorship program for me so another another subcommittee that we have is outreach subcommittee which like we go to the school and teach kids some engineering like principles and but now, unfortunately, because of the COVID, our initiatives are very limited. But still, we are thinking to build some virtual activities for the kids. But we need your help. Like always, I was I I I chaired the subcommittee like for two years. It's a kind of we we can we can use your services as much as like you can like. You can volunteer and also they, they i mean there is no limitation for the people to volunteering to joining to this group also the apegal like edmund home branch has a sponsorship subcommittee we use like dif different engineering comp companies different co contract co construction companies sponsorship program so also as i told you in previous slide my own his story the sponsorship subcommittee was one of the committees that i joined them i yeah from there i i knew like a lot of company who are active in our field and i, I think i i wrote the sub social subcommittee twice and the golf subcommittee is another one that you guys if you are interested if you have if you like golf or even if you don't like golf obviously you can you can join and maybe yeah you can take some responsibility yeah and again thank you for your time and for the organizer Elena Komalje and also my friend Inarat and also thank you for like listening to this story and I'm happy to take your questions thank you Thank you so much, Rahid. That was an amazing story, <laughs> and you didn't even mention how much you are helping us at Eric. Because oh, uh, yeah. yes, yes, my my focus was on Apega, but honestly, in parallel with all of these Apega activities, I was just like doing a lot of like collaboration with Eric. I I, I try only focus on the Apega side. But yeah, it was not only Apega. You know, when you when you don't have a specific job, you have plenty of time to deal with a lot of things. Yeah, but Elena is also my old friend, and she helped me a lot in Eric to the the, the, the first mentorship program that I took is from from Eric, and my my first mentor. Now she, she now she she used to work for the city and. It was my starting point with the city, and like I, she saw my now. Now she joined to the to the provincial government, and recently she saw my LinkedIn, and she said that, "Oh, congrats! I see that you're working with the city." But, I mean, it was very helpful, Eric's support, and I really appreciate, it, and I I I won't forget all those help yeah. support. Yeah.